now. Hello everyone, this is Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. We are on November 4th, 2022. And today for some big, we have Mark Wade, Kevin Marlins, Sab Nikita, and myself, um, Bruno Verstein. We have a pretty big agenda today with uh, quite a few items. And first of all, are the open action items. Um, Mark, would you have anything to say about that? Uh, so this this Git 2.38.1 release was is interesting as far as I know, it's been rolled out throughout the Jenkins infrastructure. Oh. Um, it's interesting because it required a change to the Git plugins automated tests. They depended on this particular behavior and that behavior had to be adjusted. So we released a Git plugin version, not that any, not that there was any need for any production change, but it was the tests uh -huh. that had to be changed. But new release has been done, and uh, it's a reminder of why why we like tests and why we like to update things promptly. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Mark. Um, next subject is about Docker agent. Unfortunately, Damien is not there today, so the proposal is still valid. Uh, we are we. Yeah, the community will try to merge the three repos, the three agent repos, into a single one. And the first step was to move uh, the Jenkins default work there. So that's what we did in the darker SSH agent, I think. And lots of other things will have to be done uh, until we can really merge the three of us, the three of them. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, that was a Jenkins default default uh, workspace work there. Sorry. Yes, lots of other things to do to unify the three repositories. And we even had some surprises uh, this week with ARM64, uh, which had a problem with GTK17. And this, um, the pull request, the issue and the pull request, which is associated to that, would help with unifying those three repos in the end, hopefully. Next one is a Java 19 exploration with Jenkins core and the migration from OntLR2 to OntLR4. So I heard this was um, most of the job were was done by uh, Basil Crow and Alex Earl. Correct. Yeah, Alex, Alex, Earl. Alex started the transition and Basil helped complete it. Yep. Yeah, because Alex Earl had the knowledge and Basil uh, gain some new knowledge and finish the job with Alex, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we didn't expect that to be th so fast <laughs> in migration. I thought it would be a headache, but when you've got such um, good people, uh, yes, that can work beautifully. And it's already included in Jenkins 2, 3, 7, 6. That's amazing to me. Uh, I'm pretty happy about that. So. Yeah, that's just the beginning of the Java 19 exploration, but it compiles, which is already a major step. Uh, next one, I think we haven't progressed on that one, which was a container image deprecation for the Blue Ocean container. So we haven't announced yet the deprecation on the image, have we? We have not. No, and that's something that for I assume it will be several weeks before we get to that. It's, yeah. There's a there's a bunch of work hiding in that, and the work is important to do, but it's lower priority than other things we've got going right now. Of course. <laughs> um, then container repository management for Jenkins agents in Sling to the uh, subject we addressed earlier. So Damien Dupontal is slowly progressing towards unifying repository, not because it's really complicated, but because he has lots of other things to do with the infra. And yeah, we do what we can do when we can help, but it's not always the case. Well, and, and there is this, this separate repository for agents with tools that certainly that's going to be a, a different one to decide. The, the unification I was envisioning had to do with unifying Docker agent, Docker SS agent, and Docker inbound agent repositories. Yep. But this one is is really a very different thing, right? And I, I'm not sure 
I'm still not clear what we should do with that. Yeah, we should ask the community because some people want to get it removed because it's not maintained, it's outdated, and we right. don't know if it's heavily used or not. And some people say, you never know, <laughs> it could be helpful, but who will take care of that? I don't know. Right. Uh, now, yes, required Java 11. Uh, I've seen the um, last numbers from Basil, who uh, oh, yes. told us, yes, a few days ago, and I think we went from 11,000 in September to 14,000 uh, GDK 17 installation in October. Uh, let me check it quickly. Yeah, I, rem I, I think we've even got a, I may have a graph that I can grab from another location. I love the graph that, that Basel had shared separately of, and it was a picture from, I think, from the statistics data. Now, where was it? I think I found it, but I don't know where I found it. Uh, I, I don't have the source, I just have picture I could show, but that's all. Yeah, I'm going to download the image and actually embed the image in it because I think that he would be just fine with that. Oh, Here's thank you, Kevin. Image. Yeah. Here's the image. And I'm going to actually embed the image in the document. Good idea. This is the cool thing here is we've reached an inflection point. The growing red line is Java 11, the shrinking green line. So we have crossed the boundary. There is now more Java 11 than Java 8, 7, 8 installed. So that's a good thing. A, a very, an impressively rapid transition given the, given the tendency of some Jenkins users to not upgrade their controllers. Yes, I ha and I haven't seen many people yelling in the community discourse, you know, saying, oh, right. I'm lost. No, uh, I think the transition is going quite smoothly. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Cool. Okay, that didn't, <laughs> that didn't work as expected. But... <laughs> look as well as I'd hoped. There we go. How about that? So better? Yeah. Okay, and um, speaking of Java 8, I think the team is still working on releasing a very last version of the Docker agent for a GDK 8. Oh, that's still, so that's still in progress. Okay. Good. Yes, um, I think it was almost finished, but some people um, made comments about old release version taking the place of new one there's still a mismatch or something which is not going that well with the release of the last gdk8 agent docker images so it's almost finished great um so now we'll new news uh, regarding java 17 except it works <laughs> beautifully uh, except for some people on arch 64 with docker lately the latest versions uh, don't work anymore sorry used to not work anymore if that even english because uh, the user which who reported uh, the issue last week i think uh, brought a correction uh, this week which has been merged so i think we're all set and all of that was because of something I introduced last April uh, for ARM32. Um, <laughs> it's not tightly linked, but that's the following of what happened. So we still have some work to do. Docker images work for ARM32, for Arch64, but now we have a slightly bigger image for ARM32 because of the bug which got discovered last week. So in the following months, I have to work on that and get back to smaller on 32 images because these my machines are usually quite constrained so having a smaller image is always good cool
Marco. Now, the Contributor Summix remix we work. Uh, where are we, Mark, regarding that remix? I still haven't. I still haven't circulated my proposal. The proposal still is as described here. The idea is three segments: uh, UX SIG, security and supply chain, and then user presentations. But I've got to send it out and see if I can get agreement. I hope to discuss it as well at the UX SIG meeting next week, so that. We can confirm with them that they would be okay with that. Cool. Thank you. Yes, yeah, and last subject, we are in platform six, so I can talk about exotic platforms. <laughs> I've been telling you for months now that I would get a Rix5 board, and it only came to my door a few days ago, I guess. So that's that small thing. Sorry for the bad focus. Hang it's on, a, there we go. That's great. Yeah. Show it again. Oh, uh, it reversed. Unfortunately. Oh, it's better, but it's reversed. So, yeah. It's a Mango Pi. Uh, what is the name exactly? Mango Pi MQ1PH uh, with one gigabyte of, um, of RAM. It has a SD card reader, and it's only one core, one RIS 5 64 bit core. And it's not three gigahertz or something, it's one something gigahertz. So, it's not. A very powerful ball, but it's the first I own, and I'm really happy about that. And you know what? It already runs Ubuntu in a preview version 20, uh, 22.10, and it already has open JDK from 11.07, I think, to 20 something. I don't know if it works, but it's available. So, yes, uh, the testing will come in the following months. I'm really happy about it. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Michael Hurt for this gift. And you know what? It also gave me another one, which is based on the same um, sock. It's also um, D1 from All Winner, but this one is made for, what is it? A real time. Um, so it's different. It can run Linux, but it only has 64 uh, gigabyte, oh, gigabyte, megabytes of RAM. So it's a very bare minimum for Linux and it can run full Python. We don't care for Jenkins, but if it can't run a Jenkins agent, maybe we could run something on another Jenkins agent to prepare something for this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and ah, oh, sorry, another gift uh, uh, from the same guy. It's also a Risk Five based, um, but this time it's a microcontroller. It's the equivalent of an ESP32. So I hope that with Jenkins, I'll be able to prepare some firm firmware for this board. There you go. So if anybody wants to support, uh, to help Jenkins with exotic platforms, uh, don't hesitate. If you've got one somewhere, uh, power it up or send it to, to us and we'll power it up and try to get Jenkins working on our free time. You know, it's not uh, possible in an, any other way. Sorry, um, I'm pretty much excited when it comes to exotic platforms. So. And that's all I had to share about that. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. <laughs>